Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another webinar of the Seamless series. For today's topic, we will be exploring reducing shopping cart abandonment with the seamless checkout experience. This session will be moderated by Christina Iowanidis, CEO of Aquitude. The panel of experts who will share their knowledge with us are Gustavo Smith, Chief Product Officer of Namshi, Junaid Qureshi, Senior VP of Engineering and Technology of Noon, and Yue Ang, Chief Product Officer of Talabat. Before we proceed to the panel discussion, I'd like to remind our webinar attendees that they can ask questions throughout the session. Please use the question box in your control panel to send your questions and we will try and get around to them. Now, can I ask all our panelists and Christina to turn on the webcam and microphone and join us for the discussion. Okay, without further ado, Christina, over to you. Thank you very much, Mika, and thank you very much for Seamless uh, for pulling together this fantastic uh, webinar. Uh, the topic is fascinating, fascinating and very, very uh, detailed. So reducing shopping cart abandonment with a seamless checkout experience. Now, I'm honored to be in the uh, company of such um, illustrious uh, panelists. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, I know that you are all part of very well-known brands in the uh, GCC region, but why don't, we, why don't we have a very, very quick introduction from each one of our panelists uh, in terms of your uh, roles and responsibilities. So can I ask Gustavo to go first? Hi, everyone. Pleasure to be here. Uh, Gustavo Smith, um, Chief Product Officer at Namshi. Um, yeah, so I, I work with the, with the tech team and the product team. Um, to basically build um, the most value we can with the product and to maximize the ROI of the tech team. Okay. Brilliant, thank you very much, Gustavo. Uh, Junaid, can I then move over to you? Small introduction. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, so I have been uh, uh, managing the technology and uh, engineering footprint uh, of Noon. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot to do with supply chain, specifically. Um, it's a bit stealth. I've actually uh, kicked off something else, so um, I can't really talk too much about that. Um, but yeah, you'll know more about that in the you know in the next few weeks. Uh, it's, it's it's really stealth at the moment. Uh, oh so. wow! Intrigue. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you for that. So last but not least, we have Ying Wei uh, Yi Wei Yang. I'm so sorry, I can't read well. Yi Wei, give us a bit of an intro. Sure. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, so my name is Yiwei. I've been at Talibat for not too long. It's been a couple of months. Uh, I started on day one and then day two, uh, we, we started uh, working from home. So it's been an interesting onboarding experience. Uh, I've been in Dubai for the last uh, two years. Uh, I used to be VP of product at Property Finder, and now moving over to the um, world of food delivery, which is Talibat. So it's been a, it's been a pretty great experience so far. Probably a baptism by fire, right? Mm, yeah, it's 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 <laughs> honestly been uh, we we've had to be very very creative with uh, with uh, a lot of the work that we're doing in the region. So it's been uh, it's been it's been good. Excellent. I mean, I hope you don't mind. We're going to come back to this, but let's start with our topic and then move into how you adjusted so quickly in Talabat. So shopping cart uh, abandonment. So um, first question, very very simple. Why do customers abandon their shopping carts, and how does this affect? you know, your guys and your businesses. Can I ask uh, Gustavo to go first? Um, sure, yeah. Um, so a, a lot of users are, are you know, sometimes uh, looking around. So excluding the, the ones who are, you know, window shopping, um, I think some of the main reasons are um, they, they find uh, something that doesn't, you know, meet the, so that surprises them and doesn't meet their expectations. So like, extra hidden costs that they, they were not aware of, like um, shipping fees, uh, tags, etc. cetera. Um, Look, we seem to have lost Gustavo. Gustavo, can you hear us? Okay, I'll move over to Junaid. Uh, Junaid, do you want to take over from your side? Yeah, sure. Um... So I think, I think fundamentally, I, mean, I was reading an article, um, cart abandonment uh, across the web is, is uh, it's, it's almost 70%. 
Hmm. Um, and you can read different statistics. Um, again, I'm going to have to generalize. I can't speak specifically about um, any organization I've worked in or I'm working in. Um, but more generally, you know, it, it's from, you know, things like a, a complicated checkout process. So as an example, Shopify, you know, that talks of the top four, um, you know, cart abandonment issues that, that, that do arise. And unexpected delivery costs is another big one. Um, sometimes it's also concerns over security. Um, so that's definitely another, you know, another one. It's not necessarily the biggest. Um, and there are a number of things. I mean, the website, I can go on. There's website performance. There's in, in, inadequate returns policy. Um, yeah, lack of payment methods is, an, is another one, which is, a, which, which is another big one. Um, sometimes what happens is you're about to check out and you just see a lot of um, cross-selling and upselling attempts happening. Um, and and that, ends up, that ends up, you know, putting customers off um, or your buyers off. Uh, and sometimes, you know, I, I've, seen, I've seen situations where you're going out, you're, you're looking at a price, it seems, everything seems fine, it's in your own currency. Um, and then when you go to the checkout, the currency is different. And there are some fundamental reasons for this. It's, it, it's about, um, I'll take it one step back if I could. And maybe if you look at the, the ability to onboard, um, you know, e-commerce players generally is quite challenging in the region. From the moment you start up a company, um, which isn't that bad, you know, you can do that in a few days, but then you try and open a bank account, <clears throat> excuse me. And then, yeah, I mean like, you know, it's, it's just crazy. And then post that, you know, you, you want to integrate a payment gateway. And that's also not the easiest thing to do. Um, so I, I think fundamentally, cart abandonment um, is happening because of a number of different reasons. And I think those reasons um, all like kind of like come together. It's almost like a multi-variable equation. We have to optimize um, more than one variable. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if that quite answers your question, but yeah. There's a number of reasons. You can, you can go online and Google it. I mean, Global Vertices, the re research I was reading you know, from these guys, uh, you know, it, sometimes somebody's in the process of buying something, they go on Google really quickly and do a quick search and they notice somebody else is selling it for cheaper, at least claiming to sell it for cheaper. Um, so I think the price point generally is, 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 uh, is probably one of the biggest things. Um, there are lots of other things you could do, you know, um, in terms of, you know, multivariate um, testing and, and the like. Um, to improve that but yeah I think fundamentally if you look at the price and quality of service I think it's about total quality management across the board um, from supply chain to your product images to you know what you're selling in reality um, your product details page if you don't have enough information people are confused sometimes they add it to their cart to do a second iteration um, you know they're like yeah let me let me just add it to my cart for now and then I'm going to come back to it and have a look at it and then really have a good look at this thing and is it worth it or not because on the first you know instance of that interaction between the product and the actual individual who's a potential buyer um, they don't get enough information um, so yeah I, I think there are a number of uh, elements on that great we'll come back to those those are very very good points thank you for that so you weigh uh, you were before you said in Property Finder, completely different mm -hmm. industry. <laughs> Very different industry, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, we uh, moving from an industry where the typical purchasing cycle is very, very is, is just that we're, we're talking months, if not if not years, as you make a decision to buy a house, to uh, uh, arguably an industry where it's quite primal, right? Like if you're hungry, you're going to look for food. I think uh, the the good part about uh, being in Calabar is a slightly different industry, and and. Uh, and if you're look if you're if you're hungry and you're looking for food, odds are you know you you, you won't abandon. Uh, so I think uh, I think that's a blessing in disguise for us. Um, but you know the way that we think about it, and 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 that's we're branching into into uh, you know things like groceries, and we can speak about that a little bit more as well. We're learning a lot about uh, the importance of, of almost just you know if we're, if we're talking specifically about the checkout process, just cleaning things up. You know, a lot of times uh, you know when when you're all the way through to the end and and you're about to make a purchase. Um, don't overcomplicate things because at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're so close to, 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 you know, where someone's about to hand you money. Uh, and, you know, the, a, a lot of times it's about making sure that you, you just get out of their way and, and get rid of distractions and, and don't do too much, as, as Junaid was saying, to try and push things left and right and, and really just help them just get over the line. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's about really... Uh, targeting a bit of that primal brain and, and not, not, not kick in too much of the, the, the logical components of it to, to, to challenge people to think very differently towards the end. Okay, 
Thank you. Thank you for that, Yue. So then let, let's talk specifics. Um, I like talking about before and afters. So can you give us any examples of any amendments that you have made in your businesses now, very specifically, that have improved this experience that Junaid was talking about? And what metrics have been impacted when we're talking about shopping cart abandonment? So the before and after. Mm -hmm. What wasn't working before? And then how did you improve it to... Uh, make uh, the, the shopping cart abandonment, well, drop, level drop. Who wants yeah, to take it? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to give this a shot. Huh? Please. You know, I think um, the way I, I like to think about, about the shopping, shopping journey as a whole, it's, it's quite holistic, right? Like, uh, and, and, you know, you, you can obviously optimize for each step of the process, but it sort of just adds to each other, right? Um, one uh, one framework that I find quite helpful. Uh, there's this online course that I did a couple of years ago called Reforge. I think they do do a very good job, sort of distilling the user psychology side of things um, into the purchasing journey, right? And one of the frameworks is called the Elmer framework, right? Talking about emotion, logic, uh, motivation, reward, and how as as a user moves through the journey, you know, you first lead with emotion, right? You lead with some sort of urge, uh, and then you need to somehow logically help people work through it. Uh, and, and give them enough motivation to almost climb that hill to make that purchase. Right? And I think it's a very good analogy as you think about, about shopping and, and what that, that, that's like. Um, and I think one very interesting dynamic that we have here is, uh, you know, we, 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 a really big thing that, that we realize in, in our world is affordability, especially during COVID times. You know, people care a lot about uh, making sure that they, they get their money's worth. They're looking for discounts, they're looking for bargains. Um, one thing that we do is uh, things, you know, and, and we see this uh, working quite well in e-commerce, uh, the e-commerce industry, especially in, in Asia, lots of flash deals and things like that that are very time-based. Uh, one thing that we do have in Palo Alto is this thing called Gems, for example, right? Which is as you go into to doing a purchase, there's a 15-minute window where, uh, you know, you can, you, can, uh, you can make a purchase, you can put things in your basket, and, and it's, a, it's a discount. It's a significant discount, but it's a discount that is very time-based. So it's sort of motivates people to, to get a great deal. It's great user value, but at the same time, there's a time component to it. So you have to finish it within a certain amount of time. So uh, it, it's always interesting to see see that. I think uh, we see a good, uh, uh, that the users who do use it, you know, uh, follow through. Um, and uh, for us, it's, you know, that's that's one of the things that we, we want to be able to do, you know, not just say, hey, it's, it's, it's just a, it's a timing thing and we're gonna pressure you to make a purchase, but uh, it's, it's, it's actually a lot of value for you. Uh, and so it's about finding a way to sort of mix and make sure that we, we put the, the user value at the heart of what we do. Fantastic, thank you. Can I move back to Gustavo? So the question Gustavo yeah. was, oh, sorry I jumped over, uh, we just lost yeah, you earlier. Fine. Yeah, sorry for that, I switched Wi-Fi now, so uh, I hope it worked well. I'm actually on a hotspot, which works faster than the Wi-Fi, which is surprising. Um, <laughs> Technology. So, yeah, so I have an example. Um, Different industry. I, I used to work for a known uh, telecommunications provider uh, that was all digital that we built from scratch. And before we we went live, we did a lot of surveys, right? Because we don't we we only had uh, access to qualitative data. We we needed to get as much information, um, asking users what they thought about the current um, providers, what they would like to see, etc. Uh, and one of the things that popped up was they wanted to choose their number. That was super important uh, for them, apparently, from the surveys um, for, for, for the market, as you know, people buy uh, license plates and they buy phone numbers, so apparently it was a thing. So we built a whole section where you would uh, select and try different numbers and, uh, and then go through with the, with, the, with the checkout. And people were dropping off like crazy. Um, so that's, that's a really good example of, you know, instead of listening to what people tell you, see what they do. Uh, so instead, we did an A-B test where we showed, uh, this is your number. And then you had a small button to change it if you wanted. So you hand it over and don't make them think. You just, you know, click, 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 and pass through without having to choose anything. So whenever you have to choose something, another option is dropping off or getting distracted. Um, so by doing that, we reduced the drop off by, I think it was 18% for that screen, which is quite substantial. Um, so yeah. So you, you were practicing new ways, uh, ethos, which is keep it simple. <laughs> keep it simple. Don't make them think, you know, just let them click through. 
Fantastic. Junaid, yeah. how about yourself at Noon? I mean, you guys have done a stellar job. I'm a Noon customer, and especially uh, during COVID, I was, I've, I've seen a lot of changes. So talk us through what you may have done around shopping cart abandonment. Sure. Again, um, I'm going to be limited on what I can say in terms of, uh, you know, what, what specifically is happening in the org. But, um, you know, I, I have, I have uh, generally provided some consultancy in terms of uh, how you can reduce uh, um, shopping cart abandonment. And I think one of the one of the vast like the the main pain point, you know, when somebody has almost decided. So I gave you a number of different reasons why mm -hmm. people possibly could abandon their car, um, but you know, it really comes down to that final stage, um, which is a, for me at least, um, the experience that I've had. It, it's about payments, um, and it's at that that final that final payment, that final checkout, where you just want to just pay and move on. Um, so once you've made a decision, excluding the category I talked about before, that are just putting it in their car. Um, to do a second, you know, wave of analysis on whether they want to purchase or not. Um, I think that that process needs to be re really, really seamless. So, you know, your address, your details and the rest of it. And that is really where I found that where, where organizations or, 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 you know, various e-com websites have made, made, made some adjustments on that. Um, it's definitely improved a uh, cart abandonment. Um, if that process you can get right. Um, that, that's probably where, it, that's the first thing. The second thing is, I think it also varies. So when you talk about companies like Amazon or Noon, um, and again, Noon is a, you know, I mean, compared to Amazon, it's, Amazon is, is, is global, Noon is a very small fish, uh, uh, you know, to be, to be honest with you, even though it's done well in the region. Um, I, I think it's quite different to the kind of target market you're looking at when it's a very specific domain. Um, so for example, if, if you could go to Gucci.com and buy something from Gucci, it would be a very different experience that the customers would expect um, as compared to, let's say, Noon, which is a very broad, you know, it sells all kinds of product families and product lines. So I think the target market is, um, is also very, you know, who are you actually targeting? Um, some people would prefer to have a certain kind of an experience versus others who would, you know, so I, 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 think, you, I think it's hard to generalize. Um, and and I'm of the, I am actually, you know, of the opinion that having um, e-com platforms or, or websites that are more target like like you know segmented based on the the audience or the product i think that may work out in the long run you'll probably see something like that happening more and more where they're being powered or or, or, or at the back end you know you'll have supply chain as a service you'll have logistics as a service you'll have you know fulfillment as a service but the front end the experience the brands will want to maintain and manage that experience with their customers um and they'd really want to want to continue with that um so I, I, again in summary what i would say is that First of all, I think to improve the abandonment, I think it's about total quality management across the board. It's not just a one, one answer. What would you do before and ask, or after? You know, I'd, I'd probably say make sure you're very transparent in the information in terms of product details, in terms of the price you're going to be giving. Don't give any crazy prices at the end. You know, shipping is this much extra. Um, and then make the payment really seamless. You know, it should, it should almost be, hey, it's done. Um, and it shouldn't be to entice customers. I'm never one to entice and try to sell and how can you get them to convert. I think just being honest and giving them a good product and a good service till the end, I think ultimately that's how you reduce abandonment. It's about delivering quality. And, and I think lots of organizations have started, and I've been in the Kareem's and the Fetchers and the Noons, you know, you know I, I've been here, even with Amazon to an extent. Um, and and if, I, if there was one thing that I really could, and I'd, I'd love to express, it would be that, you know, you have bodybuilders and, 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 and sorry, I don't mean to digress. Um, yeah, bodybuilders and, 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 and they like, you know, like they take, you know, some of them do take steroids and they look really good but they never enter, you know, a strongman competition um, because the muscle maturity isn't there, right? So I think there's this real big drive. Generally, we want to become the next unicorn or the next billion dollar company. And, and I, think, I think the focus needs to change. And I think fundamentally what, you, what we all should be doing is, especially at this position, we should be driving, uh, you know, this, this, this real positive agenda, which is a genuine one, um, to provide the best services, the best products, the best um, experiences for our end users, and the money will come. I mean, it's just natural, right? Because everyone's here for business. We'd be lying if it's not, you know, if we say that noon is money, that wouldn't be true. <laughs> so let's just be honest. I think PM is, is the top one. You've, you've hit on, on a note where there's everyone's nodding yeah. and breathing, and it's one of my favorite topics. But on that note, I hope you don't mind your way. We've got a question sure. uh, from Liam Bowes. Amazon enables one-touch purchase on their mobile app. How have the panel enabled checkout on their mobile apps to be seamless? Uh, are you asking me or, or? I'm asking the the panel. So whoever wants to jump in first. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm I'm happy to I'm happy to do a quick jump okay. in, um, but I don't think it's seamless enough. 
Um, I think it can always be better. Um, and, and I'm not just saying that for, you know, previously talking about noon. Um, but I'm saying that, I'm saying that generally. Um, there, there are a number of fundamental issues that you have, even in terms of your addresses. You know, have we ever, have we, you know, like, if you look at, if you look at the, the whole process of addressing, um, especially in our region, you know, you drop a pin, and then there are various organizations who, who've taken a claim to the pin being sufficient um, to tell you where you are, right? But it's not, because you have a flat number, you probably have a floor if you're in a building, you have a villa number, so the pin's not sufficient within itself, that's the first thing. The second thing is if that pin itself has been, you know, somewhat accurately marked in one region, it doesn't mean it's accurately marked in another region. So part of that checkout process is probably, you know, the, 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 you know where, do we, where do we deliver to? Um, and, I, and I think validity of the addresses, I think that's very important as well during that checkout process. I think when payment details have been validated once, I think it should literally just be a one click and there should be options mm -hmm. that you wish to change your address. And those options shouldn't be like, you know, complex or sticky where to change your address, you have to go back and two, three hops and then do something and then do something else and then come back to the payment screen. And then again, you have to end your, you know, enter your CVC because now it's timed out. Like it should be really, really seamless. So um, I think our product guys generally, and, and I think, um, you know, you, I think he could probably answer it much better than me. That experience is like, it's paramount. Experience is paramount or Gustavo probably. Yeah. I uh, think what uh, Liam is talking about is specifically the capability of being able to do what you just said. It is recall all those informations. And yes, if you want to change, that's a separate point. But if you have all the correct information, the one click shopping, which where we make it so easy, I think is, is the underlying um, uh, point of that of that question. So then you weigh your thoughts then because you've been nodding like crazy. Yeah, I mean uh, at the end of the day uh, smart defaults, right? I think that's that's the real key especially in, in, in food delivery. The good part is we have a lot of signals, right? You know, we know where you are. We know we know which is your home, which is your work and, and people save their addresses and things like that and and, and, and we're, we, we can be quite smart in picking a lot of those defaults. We have for example Apple Pay towards the, the end of your checkout so that you don't even have to go through the whole process of picking mm -hmm. your payment method and things like that. To, to push things through um so yeah i mean i definitely agree with all the other panelists like this is uh you know reducing friction here and, and getting to smart defaults but giving you the ability to change things if you need it um and, and maybe giving you reassurance as well that hey you're uh, a lot of the options that you have we, we tell you where you are if you're a little bit further off we let you know hey this doesn't seem quite right you're a bit further off from your address just giving you reassurances that we have your back uh, it's, it's 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 very important and and uh, so for us yes we you know, we're, we're trying to get to as many, uh, you know, uh, defaults as possible so that you can check out without, you know, in, in one click without having to do too much. So what's this great point? What's actually stopping you in actually achieving that one click shopping? What are the challenges that you're facing? Yeah, it's always a bit of a fine, fine balance between giving, ensuring that users have control because it's, 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 it's very important for users to feel like, hey, you know, uh, it's, it's not this app that's just taken everything from me, but they, they have very good visibility of the status of the system and what it's about to do. Um, and uh, it's, it's about achieving the, uh, that, that, that balance. Um, and I like to think that like we're getting a little bit closer, um, but you know, honestly, I think we can be a little bit more aggressive in the next, uh, next little while to make sure that you know, we shorten that time even more. Great, thank you for that. Uh, sorry for putting you in the spot. Uh, Junaid, we've got a question come through. Gustavo, I will come back to you in a sec. Noon Daily has introduced automatic charging at the end of each day. I'm not sure about all of this, so you're gonna have to confirm whether it's the case or not. Yeah. How did your customers respond to the fact that they are charged for their cards without them manually finalizing their cards? This is a question from Louis Botha. Uh, okay. Do you understand the question? Yeah, I, I do understand the question. Um, again, I'm going to talk about um, previously, but when, you know, I was, um, uh, you know, when, when, when Noon Daily was being launched, the idea was to try and make it seamless. Mm. Um, and this was one direction, um, one step in that direction to try and make it seamless. So basically you'd have a cutoff time and at that cutoff time, people would go in and start to fulfill your order. And you wouldn't have to worry about, oh, I forgot to check out or I haven't checked out. And you don't want to continue checking out either. So imagine, you know, milk, oh, I don't have milk, and then you check out, you know, milk, and then you place another order again for the eggs, and then you do the same thing for the bread and then the butter, and then it goes and goes on and on. Um, so I, I think generally, I think that's probably ended up being a, a, a great potential solution um, to making the experience seamless. 
um, because it's for groceries, right? And groceries are the kind of things we're expecting you, you know, you'll be ordering them almost daily. Um, so it's been very positive in terms of, I think, customer, um, you know, customer responses. Uh, in terms of uh, the process of getting that done, that's been more challenging because you're talking about multiple suppliers, potentially multiple fulfillment centers. You're talking of temp temperature control where required. So how do you, how do you consolidate, you know, something that requires sub-zero um, degrees um, versus something that, you know, needs to be kept at ambient temperature um, for that time period before you do the checkout process. So I think generally it depends on the product, but yes, for groceries, it's, uh, I think it's something that's, that's actually been very advantageous and, and generally it is. And there are other organizations that, um, that, that I think probably, you know, Noon learns from, one of them being in, in, in India, they would do that. Um, they'd have a cutoff time and everything would be at your doorstep. Um, and, and it worked out really well. So, so, so I think it's, yeah, it's a positive one for sure, depending on what, you know, what you're basically selling. So for daily, yes. For groceries, yes. You know, for, for, for like buying an iPhone, probably not. <laughs> um, and the like, yeah. Okay, interesting, because it seems that um, the question is around the fact of, 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 of response from the customer around the, well, I haven't actually clicked the final buy now button. But if the proposition is clear to customers that purchase will be made irrespective at the end of the day, is that, is that clear for customers, do you think? Or is there a cause there, for concern? Or not uh, concern, querying? <laughs> I, I mean, generally, 100%, yes. And it's just about relaying information and transparency of that information. So again, I don't want to be specific about anyone uh, or exactly. whether it's anybody else. But yes, I think it's, it's very important. And, and, that, and that user experience, again, going back to that, is super important. So 24-hour mm -hmm. checkout, you will automatically be charged how long you have before your cart is going to close. Um, that needs to be super obvious. Um, but I, I do say that in the beginning, you know, I, I was very passionate about, about the daily project uh, generally. And, and, and I, I even remember, you know, sending a message and saying, you know, we're in this together. Everyone's on the lockdown. And no matter if everything fails, we want to make sure we get daily right because we want to make sure people can still, you know, eat and purchase from, you know, from, 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 the, from their, you know, from their homes under this kind of, uh, you know, it's almost house arrest. <laughs> um, so, 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 so that was, yeah, that was the main reason. It really wasn't even something to drive, uh, to, to, to drive sales or reduce cart abandonment. It was just simply because we wanted to make people's lives easy and have the confidence that the next morning they're going to have something at their doorstep, which they can just open the door and, and, and buy what they, you know, and, and have what they, you know, what they ask for. Can't say we've been 100% successful, but yeah, that, that was the intention. Right. Thank you for that. So Gustavo, back to you. Uh, let's go back to the question around the Amazon one-click button. Yeah. Because I wanted to get to that. What are your views on what's stopping us or more a lot of retailers doing that? And is it relevant? So it really depends on, on, the, on the industry. Um, so if you, have a, uh, if, if you have one product to sell, it's, it's easier to, to do a one step or a very reduced step um, checkout. If you want to protect AOV, so you want the, the maximum amount of average order value, then one step, it doesn't help you to, to uh, cross-sell and, and upsell your customer. So you have to find the balance, as, as uh, Yue was saying, uh, between making it very smooth and letting them add more stuff to, to the cart. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's my view. Of course, you know, we all aim for, for, uh, for the most seamless um, experience as, as possible, and we have to ensure that we have a methodology that helps us understand the user behavior. So what, where is the user effort? Where are they struggling? Uh, so you go from, from um, quantitative data, from the same percentage of drop off per screen to qualitative, like doing, um, looking at session recordings or so to really understand what's behind these drop offs and doing user, user interviews and user tests um, to get to the, to the bottom of, of the issues. Um, so you have to have a methodology that continuously helps you do that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my view. Uh, if you have the right methodology, then it, you know, it happens in, in iterations, but it, it, you know, you, you do well. <laughs> Great. Well, on that note, then, can you tell us what kind of technology, um, or methodologies as you refer to them, you use, um, to actually optimize, uh, the shopping completion process? Yeah, I mean, in terms of methodology, it's typical agile scrum, um, 
with different flavors of uh, doing user tests and, and uh, you know, uh, it's a very long one. I'll, <laughs> we can do a separate uh, a separate discussion about about that one. In, in terms of um, of technologies, um, we mostly use analytics and BigQuery and different reports to to understand what's happening where. Um, and we are also playing now with um, different session recording. Um, I would call it session recording on steroids, um, like quantum metric, full story. Uh, that basically help you quantify um, where you're getting rage clicks or, or taps, um, dead clicks, bugs, etc., and organize by priority and where you're getting the most drop off and why. And then you can look at the sessions, the session recording, and understand, come up with a theory of why that, that is happening to fix it. You can run some tests and, uh, and fix it. It's super interesting. Yes, and, and do you, as part of that, um, Junaid mentioned it earlier, do you use things like multivariate testing as part of the checkout process, or is that just purely a front-end piece? Gustavo. Um, we, we, do, uh, we do a lot of A-B testing. Um, so we have, uh, now in Nanshi, we have a, a tool that we built in-house. Uh, in the past, I've worked with uh, Optimizely, Optimize, and, uh, and others. Um, so we, we try to keep it simple. We, we run a few, few options um, to try to get results faster. And then we test, uh, we test onward. OK, how about yourself, Junaid, in terms of multivariate taste testing? How do you, do you use it, or do you use other optimization approaches? Um. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, sorry, I, I, I don't mean to be going around the question. Um, I, I think fundamentally, so, so, you know, engineering is applied science. Um, you, can, you, can, you can round off where it makes sense. You can ignore where it makes sense. You mathematically model something of the real world. Um, and then you attempt, once you model it, to use principles of, 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 of maths and, and, and uh, you know, even possibly apply physics in, in certain ways to try and optimize a process. So the moment you try to model something um, and you take it from the real world, outside of that real world into another realm, um, and then you mathematically model that one thing, um, you're definitely missing some information. Um, so, so the first question to ask is when you do do multivariate testing, how do you know that the sample you're testing on is a true representation of your population? Um, and, and, and when you look at analytics, you know, how many people came to my website and, and what happened when I done X, Y, Z, how do you know that it wasn't because of some other variable that they done what they done. Okay, so rather than focusing on, on the, actual, um, the actual question, what would you recommend for people who are actually listening in and yeah. are looking to optimize their, their uh, checkout experience, what would you recommend to them? Um, so the first thing I would do, yeah, I, I think that's a good one. The first thing I would do is before I go into all the crazy analytics and all my data and the data science kind of stuff, um, what I would actually recommend is uh, know your customer. Um, build a relationship and a rapport with your customer. Speak to your customer. Have a brand that people are, are you know, um, they, they have a bias towards because it's a good quality brand. And ask them what they want. Um, don't think that, you know, you yourself are, are, are zero in the sample space. Talk to friends and family. Try to do something which will be very organic and it's very fundamental and it's almost like you could probably do the same thing if you had a business like 300 years ago. Before you go and look at the tech, um, I, I think that's probably one of the first things I would do and, and, and speak to them. And then also to validate some of, your, some of the things you're doing, then maybe ask them, hey, do you mind if, if we show you something? So um, there are lots of tools that are available that are almost stalking you when you're online. And you know, in different countries, they have different uh, regulations and I'm not too comfortable with them. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't say that would be my first step. I would say not even my last step. I, I would just try to relate with the customer and get feedback as much as you can. If it means get some feedback through giving coupons, or through giving special discounts or certain access, you know, to a product line before anybody else, I would do it. So it's like a win-win before I look at the maths. And I don't mean don't look at the maths, um, do that. But remember, mathematically modeling something, you're always the entropy. The, you know, there is a reduction in information um, when you mathematically model it because you're, 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 you're biasing yourself to a certain, uh, certain realm. Yeah. Okay. Can I throw the same question? Thank you for that, Junaid. Can I throw the same question then to you, Wei? in terms of how do, what technologies and what approaches do you use uh, to optimize checkout? 
Yeah, I think um, Junaid really, uh, really hit the nail on the head in this one, actually. You know, I think we've, uh, you know, as, as much as it's really important for all of us to become more data driven, provide a bunch of tools, and we've talked about, you know, analytics and BigQuery and all that, and, and, and being able to test, test a lot. We do, you know, I think all of our platforms all, all, all do a lot of that. Um, Junaid said, some, said something even like two questions ago that really resonated with me, which is especially as all of our platforms are becoming a bit more high frequency, right? Like I can imagine that for Talabad, for Noon, for Namshi, like pe as people are transitioning to e-commerce, um, they're, they're using your service more and more. And as a result, that trust is really important. So that personal relationship and, and, and doing not just quantitative analysis, but qual uh, is equally important, right? So on, on our end, we've been really growing our design organization and especially our design research function. And why is that is because we really believe in understanding our users very deeply, right? Uh, whether it's your, whether you're a first time user, whether you are a returning user, whether you're users from different segments, being able to deeply understand like what, what goes through your mind, what's top of mind for you, uh, what are some things that you, you, you care about when you're, uh, what, and how you make a decision. I think it's all of those things that are kind of like your 80, 20, right? Like you, you don't need to have a, a, a rocket science to, to tell you, uh, you know, what people want. Um, usually when you speak to five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 people in each segment, you, you get a, a very good picture of, of what they're trying to optimize for qualitatively. And for me, those are the hunches that, that, that really help you focus your, your, your efforts on what you should be testing. So I think start with understanding your users and then through that, the short list, short list of experiments will, will, will show up. Uh, and with that, I think your, your success rate of, of what can come out the door and actually de derive impact is, is going to be much greater. Um, anyway, that's my, my, my personal view on, on starting first with the qual before, before you focus too much on, on, on the quantitative. Great, but there are, there's another question that's quite quantitative from our uh, viewers. So for all, what is the average cart abandonment rate for your industry? And what is the biggest change you made to improve your organization's abandonment rate? Can I throw that your way, uh, UA? Yeah, honestly, I think ours is a bit of an edge case uh, because our abandonment rate is not that high, uh, especially if you've gone through the process of, of, of looking through your food, going through your menu, adding your things on. Like we, you know, in, in, in a lot of cases, we have very, very low, uh, almost single digit uh, abandonment rates uh, in, in different, you know, depending, depending on what vertical or what market. So I think uh, we, we do quite a, quite a good job at, at, at keeping that down. Um, and, and hopefully as we, as we start uh, simplifying the experience, it helps a little bit more. But, but you know, I think, I think uh, the food delivery space is quite different from, uh, from, from traditional e-commerce, I would assume. Okay, then thank you for that. Junaid, let's go for the traditional e-commerce then in terms of your industry's uh, abandonment rate and what change you made to improve it. Yeah, sure. I, I mean, again, I, I can't give any statistics. I'm sorry on, on you know, what, what the, but you can go online. I mean, you know, you can see it like, 44% is uh, abandonment rate is due to higher shipping costs and the like. Um, I, I, I think, you know, it depends. So, so the organization itself, uh, if it wants to be profitable, it's, uh, it has a different ethos. If it wants to grow really quickly, exponentially and hit the top right corner, like a hockey stick, it will have a different, different methodology. Um, to reduce abandonment, like I said before, it comes down to those, fun, you know, those, fundamental, those fundamental things. Um, uncomplicate or, or reduce the, the complexity of the checkout process, reduce, you know, any unexpected costs, um, you, you know, like uh, make sure you, you're very transparent in terms of, um, you know, what you're selling. Don't be so desperate to, you know, excessively upsell and cross sell. Um, I, I mean, you know, it, I think they're the fundamental things. I, I could go on and on, you know, and, and make sure you have competitive prices running. You can have a pricing engine that's automatically learning from your competitors. So you can be scraping from the internet and you can be looking at prices for the same product and you can make sure you're within a certain range. And that's all the tech, we, you know, we can talk about and we can get very, you know, we can get very into that. But I, I would say fundamentally stick to the cause. Um, you know, how, how many, you know, noons and Amazons are there? So I think the vast majority are probably small to medium, you know, businesses in e -com, Lots of businesses are transitioning because of COVID generally. So I would say before you try and do all that crazy rocket science, you know, just be as honest as you can with your customer. And, and I think, you know, Amazon's 14 leadership principles, you know, principle one is customer obsession. Start with the customer and work your way back or start with the problem and work your way back. So I think 60% is understanding the problem. It's, it's yeah. not actually, yeah, I, I think that's, if not more, it actually is probably 80%. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> I think um, where, the, where the question is coming from is from a, from an industry perspective, not a noon specific car abandonment rate. So this is why I think the the question was was posed this way. So maybe let's go to fashion there. Namshi, thank you for that, Junaid. Well, yeah. So, so Gustav, I, <laughs> I I don't think I can I can share um, Namshi's particular you know commercial fashion, rate, but, but but in fashion I've seen. It depends a lot on how strong the, the e-commerce is, how strong the brand is, um, whether it's luxury or, or fast fashion. But I've seen uh, anywhere from less than 1%. So 1%, I would say, for, for a semi-new e-commerce, it's okay, um, to 5% or more. Uh, so it really depends. Like the strong players will have more than, than you know, 2% easily, 3% um, commercial rate. Um, and during during sales, like um, sometimes Ramadan or or Black November, you'll have much much higher conversion over over five percent if you're a strong player. Right. So you so the the summary is the stronger the player, the higher the abandonment rate, because then the the larger the amount of users as well. Is no, no, that, no. The, the higher the conversion, the higher the conversion rate. So the lower. Oh, the, sorry. Okay. The sorry. Yeah, yeah. Fine. So the car abandonment rate on average is one percent in fashion, right? For I would, I'm guess I'm I'm guessing. I don't have uh, okay. from what I've seen. I'm guessing one percent is okay. Um, yeah, it depends. It depends on a lot of things. So how strong strong your product is, how how fast your website or app is, um, and also how much trust do you do you build in your users. So if you're a known brand and you're you're an established player, you'll have more more trust and you'll have a higher conversion rate. Um, if you're a new player, people don't want to give you a credit card; they don't trust you yet. Um, so that that plays a pretty strong role. Okay, interesting. So we'll come back here for another question from Michelle, uh, and the question is: Continue as a guest. Would it increase order conversion rates? Do you believe? So let's let's start start with you, Gustavo, because we we're just talking to you. So if you continue as a guest without actually having to input and become a member, uh, would it yeah. increase conversion rate? For sure. So what, one of the top reasons for abandoning the card is having to create an account, and especially if you ask, you're asking for a lot of fields and unnecessary information, uh, and you make it a hassle to create an account. Um, so I think guest checkout is is a must. Uh, unless, you know, because of the nature of your industry, you cannot do it. It's an absolute must. Thank you. Uh, Junaid, anything to add about the guest checkout from uh, your side? No, yeah, it just comes down to being seamless. Um, so as seamless as you can be during the checkout process, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, you know, directly proportional to, to um, um, yeah, to, 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 to getting more people to buy on, online, right? Or inversely proportional to abandonment. It's just mm. natural. You shouldn't have to force someone to provide X amount of details to make a purchase. Um, yeah, for sure, they'll do that anyway. If they, you know, if you if you, if they have buying and and you've given them a good product and you've given them a good service, they're going to do that anyway. Um, I think there are lots of schemes out there at the moment, you know, and there are people who are selling lots of things. And how do you get email, you know, email addresses, and then how can you continue to market and remarket and retarget and da 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 da. And I think yeah, look at look at look at Amazon's number one principle. Um, you know, customer obsession. Start with the customer and work your way back. Okay, thank you for that. So I have a question in relation to COVID-19. So in COVID-19, we've seen that a lot of new uh, people who were not necessarily so digitally uh, minded have had to fall back into the digital world. So this is a completely different segment, a completely different mindset. Um, of customers who are now buying from your various organizations. Have you noticed um, with this new wave of customer coming through that there, this has impacted your uh, checkout experience and the um, car abandonment rates? Uh, I'm going to st I'll start with Gustavo because he's nodding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, so behavior changed quite a bit uh, from, from what they're buying so when, when Dubai and, and Saudi went on lockdown, we sold a lot of pajamas. <laughs> we sold a lot of yeah. beauty uh, stuff and home um, items. 
uh, which is, um, and, and not a lot of sneakers, uh, which is our, where we sell the most. Um, so our, you know, our whole inventory got reshuffled. Um, but what was very interesting is, is we got a lot of new customers that came from offline, um, which is, you know, uh, a much larger part of a piece of the pie of, of, of the retail pie. Uh, so there's a lot of potential now for for anyone who's willing to you know onboard new sellers, um, and they were different in two main ways. Uh, one is their AOV looked more like the offline AOV, so it was higher than our existing customers. Usually, new customers have a lower AOV than than existing customers, and in this case, they were even higher than than our existing customers, which is very interesting. So our AOV shot up. Uh, and the conversion rate was lower because, of course, these are new customers. Um, they 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 don't know they don't know you yet very well, so they don't trust you as much. Um, they're more hesitant. They're more window shopping, comparing, uh, and then they're ready to uh, to give you your you know their credit card or do cash on delivery. Um, so yeah, it's higher AOV with a lower conversion rate uh, and a lot of visits in certain uh, in certain times. Uh, people were online, were online, bored at home, and uh, they 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 looked at at uh, items on uh, on Namshi to kill time. Yeah. Okay, so there was a lot of I'll put it in my cart because I'm doing my research. I think what Jeanaid was talking about earlier, um, and not necessarily converting um, as paying customers because they were doing a lot more research than they would normally do because actually they wouldn't necessarily be online in the first case. Is that correct, Gustavo? Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, overall it balances out positively uh, because of the much higher AOV. But, uh, but yeah, we definitely people checking and I, I assume they would be checking uh, competitors and different players um, and, and, and choosing from there. They were exploring the, the new online world. I mean, e-commerce penetration in the Middle East is not very high, but we have a very high um, you know, access to smartphones, super high, uh, but a fairly low um, e-commerce penetration, which tells me that we have a lot of potential in the region. Um, and especially now that people are being sort of forced to go online. So I think it's going to be very interesting. Great. How about yourself, Junaid, in terms of these new, the new wave of customers that have come in? Has that impacted the uh, cart abandonment rate and the checkout? Yeah, I, I think... Um... I mean, there was a new wave. It was, it was, uh, there was a huge spike, like the COVID spike. There was also a spike in uh, the amount of conversions that we initially got, um, and I think that came down. But I, I can't, I wouldn't be in a position to tell you was it um, specific to you know to this time period for, because there were so many other variables. So there were many people who decided to purchase. You know, maybe you're looking at between two and four x increase of uh, your, your 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 volumes, you know, generally um, per day. Um, but then you saw that immediately drop. And what's the reason? Going back to the same thing, you know, there's supply and demand, and you have to you have to offer that same quality. And, and there's so many moving parts. You've got suppliers whose warehouses have been, you know, um, they're practically you know under lockdown, so they're closed. You've got lack of movement. Transport is all you know is pretty much cross border is all over the place. So even though we're not doing cross border, but the other people that are doing cross border that stopped, and because of that, we're dependent on them. Um, so I wouldn't be able to say yeah, abandonment increased and decreased because of X. Um, there's much more than X uh, in the equation, yeah. Okay, thank you. You way then, tell mm. about. Yes, different industry altogether. Yeah, but I think it's 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 one that uh, you know as we turned the the, the corner into COVID in, in March, I think uh, as we we spoke with a lot of users, the first thing we did right, we saw that uh, the the consumption patterns are a little bit different. People started working from home, people started cooking more as well. And, um, and overall, people were worried, right? Like, you know, early on in COVID, people didn't know, was it safe to use cash? You know, uh, was it, is it better for me to use my card? Uh, what, what are the safety standards for the different riders? How are the restaurants, you know, preparing my food? I think there were, you know, I think uh, as, you know, we, we talked about how we should uh, clean up and, and make your, your checkout process as clean as possible. But I think this is one of those uh, uh, edge cases where, especially in times of COVID, people want reassurance. They want to know what exactly you're going to do. So, for one thing that we push very heavily is the move from from cash payment to online payment. Uh, we launched contactless delivery. We made it very clear, like what exactly that was. 
So we saw that um, you know it helped with the, the end of the flow, right? Because you know you may be looking at food and things like that, but towards the end you're thinking, ah, like how is my food going to be cooked? So it was it was good to to, to reassure people um, with that. And for us, uh, especially through COVID, we also saw a massive change in, in consumer behaviors as well, right? So in, in uh, Talabat has traditionally been a food delivery player. Uh, in Q1 of this year, early this year, we launched um, other verticals as well, right? So uh, Talabat Daily is our, 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 um, our store, uh, which we've launched in, in many parts in, in Dubai and also in Kuwait. Um, and it was really great to be able to see, uh, you know, us sort of uh, serving the, our customers in a very different way, right? And, and getting whether it's quick delivery and things like that out the door, getting people's groceries, uh, you know, in, in 15 to 20 minutes. It, it was, it was uh, you know, ca it, it was sort of the right place at the right time and being able to serve uh, a very different consumer behavior. Right. Thank you for that. We have a question here regarding, and I was going to get onto this. Uh, uh, if you have... Um, a, cus a customer that's put um, items in their shopping cart and then moved on because life happens. We know this. We've all done it ourselves. We've got distracted. How do you then get uh, your, the customer to come back to complete that purchase? What are the best strategies that you've seen would then make that customer convert? So, okay, uh, let's start with Gustavo again. Um, yeah, I mean, push notifications, email, SMS, um, making sure that you automate all of the, the, the messages to bring them back um, and customize it to where they are, uh, where they dropped off in the, in the process. And if you have any, any personalization possible, like about the item and et cetera, that helps. Um, Offering coupons helps a lot for conversion rate, but can affect your margins, so you have to be careful. Um, yeah. Okay, so interestingly, this the question also then continues. Personally, I would be encouraged to purchase items in my shopping cart. If I, I got an email or message that was limited, there, for which there was a limited time deal on the items on my cart, but have not yet received a nudge of this kind. Uh, you just talked about coupons. So you're saying the conversion, the, it will obviously impact your, um, yeah, your the money you will make, but in terms of encouraging the purchase from a customer perspective, is that one that we would possibly want to consider? So coupons, yeah, I mean, you have to play with them and test, um, but there are other ways to, um, Put a little bit a little bit of pressure uh, so like social pressure saying hey look th this is running out um do you want to take the last one this is this is you know we have very few stock on on this uh, item you left on card and just remind them uh, you, we also um you know you you can you can do it in different parts uh, of the apples so if they can come back you'll see a lot of players that have uh, you left this in your card you just remind them People sometimes don't even know that they, they, they don't remember that they left something in the cart. Mm. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, I won't be able to go through to everyone on this question because we've got another one, which is very interesting. We're short on time. So I'm going to move to another one and I'm going to throw this one to yourself, Junaid. Uh, what are the thoughts behind loyalty rewards program in general and how do they affect the checkout experience? That's number one. Number two, does showing points earned help in the process, encouraging users to complete their checkout. What's your experience on that? Wait, what was the second point? I, I couldn't the showing on. points, so loyalty points, yeah, yeah. Uh, earned in the process, encourage users to complete their checkout. Okay, um, I, I think having loyalty programs uh, can be beneficial if they know what they're signing up for, um, specifically. Um, and lots of times you end up saying, hey, excuse me, do you want to sign up for this? And you get a card, even in a on a brick and mortar um, purchase. Um, and, and you just keep them getting points and, and basically they haven't really added much value. So I think it's very important to be transparent that if you do X, you will get this benefit of Y. Um, will it have a direct impact on your checkout process? Well, if, you're, if your checkout is still the same, then I guess not. But if now for these people, you have a specialized checkout process, which allows you to you know, skip a few steps 
Um, but you know, all, if you already have the defaults in place, like smart defaults in place, maybe it's not going to have such a big impact. So I think directly uh, correlating that with the checkout process would be, uh, for me, something that I probably wouldn't do at, at, at a first uh, at a first stage of analysis. Um, yeah, not for, not for, not specifically for checkout. Okay. Uh, another question has come through. What CRM strategies are you currently implementing in order to bring down car abandonment percentages? I was going to throw this your your way, UA, but I think you said your your car abandonment percentages are very low. But curiously, is that yeah, a I mean, different? I think uh, speaking about CRM strategies, if we abstract that a little bit, it's it's really about personalization and understanding where people are in their journey, right? Um, I think for us, you know, we're, we're learning that SSR, our sphere grows from just food delivery. We're learning about different patterns, right? People who come to us predominantly for food, some people predominantly, you know, for, for, for groceries. Uh, some of them are, you know, high spending. Some of them are low spending. Some of them are a bit more, more discount conscious. Some of them are, you know, they, they really care about brands that they always go back to. So I think um, what we care a lot about now is making sure that we personalize those experiences for you. Um, and, and as you come onto the, the app, for example, the home screen now, for example, shows you different things based on, uh, we, we're able to sort of tweak it based on what, 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 you, what you do and what you want. Um, so uh, hopefully, you know, that's, that's a plan for us to have a lot more of a personalized experience, whether it's the, the app experience that you see or whether offsite and the promos that you get or the mails that you get um, to make sure that we uh, serve our customers best. Right. Okay. Uh, how about Gustavo and Junaid around this piece on CRM strategies in order to bring down car abandonment? Is there anything you want to share that you may not have mentioned? Um, for example, I have a question around AI empowered chatbots or even live chat agents supporting customers during their purchase process. Is that something that you have um, executed, work with, uh, encourage, discourage? Um, Go ahead. Go yeah. uh, so, I mean, in, in terms of AI chatbots, you have to be, so it depends a lot on wh where, what your capacity is and what your um, maturity stage is. Um, so sometimes it's very easy to, you know, um, get tempted by shiny, shiny, um, interesting AI. And, um, but it's, if, even if you're not, not there yet, um, so, and building a chatbot that works and gives you a good experience takes work. Um, so you can start with a, basically a dumb bot that is like an IVR, uh, for the phone that gives you options and you select, and that's easier to build and you can do, um, quite a bit with it. Uh, in terms of live chat, uh, in my experience, um, it, it helps a lot to get quick feedback if you need help throughout the, the checkout process. Um, and it helps a lot if it's easily accessible. So if you hide the, um, the contact us, then if someone is, uh, you know, has a question and is not, uh, is not very sure about checking out, then you can cover that really quick. Um, you, need, you need to make it in a, in a way that doesn't distract users and, uh, and you know, is not, uh, you know, in, in their face too much. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. how about yourself, uh, Junaid, in terms of CRM strategies as well as new uh, approaches and technologies for reducing cart abandonment? Sure, so I'll, yeah, I'll, try, I'll try and be quick because I know we're, we're short on time. Um, so the first thing is, I think uh, um, I, I think you could replace a, you know artificial intelligence, an artificially intelligent, you know, like powered chatbot by having a simple FAQ, right, um, uh, and just having a link to that, right, without going down that road. That's probably the first thing. Um, the second thing is when I was at Kareem and I believe me, like uh, it was, it was a brilliant experience. Um, uh, you know, I was actually the, I was, I was the, the first engineer, head of engineering, only heading myself in base camp debate because <laughs> there's nobody else. And I'll tell you what won, for me, what won the game was that phenomenal customer experience when something goes wrong. So when a captain, well, you know, he was meant to be outside your door, but he's not. And you'd be able to immediately ring this number and immediately somebody would pick up the phone. You'd have a conversation and they would there and say, we've canceled that ride risk. You could hear them speaking to another captain and they say, sir, we're very, very sorry. He'll be with you in X amount of time. And they'd even give you something, you know, almost like as a, as a, as a, you know, we're sorry kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I, I think, I think that customer experience, having someone live there on the spot is, yeah, that would be, I think that should just happen anyway. Um, how we do that. I'm not sure if we can do it for each and every customer. You need lots of people. 
Um, but yeah, I think that should be there. I'm aligned with the Gustavo for sure. It makes a huge impact, a huge difference. Brilliant. Thank you both for that. Yeah. So as we've got one minute to go, uh, to wrap up this discussion, what are the main lessons you have learned during this pandemic about customer shopping behavior uh, that you will use? Uh, that, so what's the learning and how will you use this in the future? And let's start with you, Wei. Yeah, I think um, if there's one word to leave everyone with, it's empathy. You know, uh, we, we really need to be very in tune with what people are looking for. What are the challenges? What's going through their minds? It's, it's a very un for, for people across the world. Um, and and it's, it's, uh, it's very important for us to listen and listen well. Um, if there's one thing I think that's quite common that all three of us have, 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 have sort of shared today is, you know, great that you can optimize steps of the funnel, but at the end of the day, like you're serving a customer at the end of the day, and, and let's focus on that. Let's focus on solving real problems for real people and not just try and, and, and hack our way through or apply technologies just for the sake of it uh, when uh, there's so much more that we can do to, to, to uh, the region forward. Thank you. Brilliant. How about yourself, Junaid? Um, I think Yewe, yeah, I think um, Yewe, sorry. I, th I think he, he summed it up like, pretty well. I, I would say start with the problem and work your way back. Um, you know, definitely be data driven, but that doesn't mean you have to be, a, you know, like a, a crazy in tech. Um, home in with your customers um, and then understand, you know, it's not about getting, getting a huge volume of, of traffic on your website and getting conversions because that would be short term. You really need to think in the mid and long term. Um, and there are multiple variables. There are multiple steps along the whole process from getting a product shipped into the country to having somebody make a purchase and being happy and, and, and coming back for the next one too. Um, so start with the problem, work your way back, you know, match supply with demand, understand that demand. Sometimes customers don't know what that demand is. Um, but yeah, focus on the problem and work your way back rather than looking for solutions in the world. Um, you know, the best solution to a problem is the solution to a problem, not another problem, right? <laughs> Right. Thank you for that. Finally, last but not least, Gustavo, what are your learnings and what will you apply going um, forward? Yeah, there, there are two things that I'm interested in, uh, well, probably more than two things, but two things that I can think of now that I'm interested in, um, you know, working um, that came out of the, the, the pandemic. Um, the first one is, whenever there's a crisis, you, it, it gives you focus, you know? Mm -hmm. so, so you, you suddenly, um, focus on, on fixing inefficiencies that you've had for years, maybe. Uh, and, and you are all working together to, to make this better um, with, with like a, you know, completely different uh, energy. Um, so that's something that I, I, I wish to retain and to continue because we've got a lot of good work done during, during the pandemic, even when we were all working remotely, which is, you know, very encouraging. Um, the other one is, we also got a lot of new users that were, were new to us. Uh, so we need to work on understanding them um, and, and adapting our, our experience to them uh, so we can retain them. Brilliant. Thank you so much all for such a great session. Gustavo, Junaid, uh, Yue, appreciate your time. Mika, over to you. Thank you very much. Yes, um, obviously, thank you very much, Christina, for doing a great job leading that very insightful session. And thank you to each one of our panelists for joining us here today. It is great to see, you know, different um, industries come together. Um, for the attendees, this is the end of our panel discussion. The webinar will be accessible via our website for on-demand viewing within the next 24 hours. If you do have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with us via our website. And we will be live on your screen for four days on 6th to the 9th of July for Seamless Virtual, which is a four-day virtual conference. So, yeah, we'll send you more details. And thank you, everyone, again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you.